Let's now replace the string control with a numeric control and change its representation to be I32. Also, let's write a comment on our block diagram to help us keep track of what the control values will represent. 0 equals AND, 1 equals OR, 2 equals XOR. Going back to the block diagram, notice how the selector terminal is blue and our cases have not changed. However, some of our cases are now invalid for numeric input. Notice how the text is red. We want to change them to the corresponding scheme. Note that like with the string control, we must define all our cases. However, since we still have our default case, this condition is met. Another useful method of defining default cases is using the following notation. 3 dot dot LabVIEW understands as being all the values between 3 and infinity. Also, we need to define all the values between negative infinity and negative 1. This is done by entering dot dot negative 1 in the case selector menu. This is a convenient notation to use when defining numerics instead of listing all of the possible values. The final point to discuss is that there is another option to defining the output for every tunnel in every case. If we hadn't wired an invalid entry for our default case, we would have a hollow tunnel and a broken run icon. If we right click on the tunnel and choose Use Default if Unwired, then the undefined values will always be 0 for numerics, empty for strings, and false for Boolean outputs. In this lesson, we learned how to change the representation of a numeric. We also learned how to use case structures with numerics. And we learned how to use shortcuts for specifying a range of values to select a case within the case structure.